Hello and welcome to episode two of the uh, GB Transfer Show. Uh, sorry for the background, it's just a three-star hotel, but somewhere sunny, hence the uh, glasses. For this one, uh, I'm glad to uh, say that Arya Yutsu joins us to moderate the whole thing, but next to him and talking to me will be as well the genius that is ESPN's Gabriel Marcotti. Thank you. Thank you so much, Guy. I'm from your terrace at a three-star hotel to this terrace, which is just my terrace garden that my mum tends to really carefully. Uh, it's great to um, talk about transfer stuff, but before we really get into the five stories that we have today, uh, Gab, I just wanted to ask you, why are we so caught up with this whole transfer news stories and this whole fascination for uh, rumours and the rumour mill? Well, I, I think because you know, there's only so many chances that, uh, that you get over the course of a year to, to either strengthen your team or to uh, uh, you know, go and, and do something about it. Um, it provides an alternative storyline as well. You know, for a lot of these clubs, if you're sort of, I don't know, if you're in mid-table or let's say you're in third place, your goal is top four, you know you're not really going to drop out of it, you know, here's an alternative storyline. Here's something else that, uh, that, that you can go and, and, and talk about. And there's, I mean, I think it's an open secret. There's a tremendous amount of interest in, in transfers and who could be doing what and who could be doing where. Well, one of the uh, people who's always been in the news when it comes to the transfer market, especially in the last few seasons, is Neymar. So let's start with Neymar. Uh, back in the news again, uh, reportedly begged Barcelona to take him back, but his father said that those rumours are fake news. Uh, what's going on there, Guillaume? Can you tell us a little of what's going on? I think first, let me take my glasses, because that would be disrespectful for the audience. But uh, there's no doubt whatsoever, 100%, Neymar wants to go back to Barcelona. There is, uh, he's, every couple of days that he's got a break, he goes to Barcelona, meets Luis Suarez or Messi, doesn't mind being photographed with them in what it is a very strange situation, because he goes back to a club that he's taken to court. Now, what his dad is saying is that the court case continues. They don't want to forgive the uh, sign-on fee that they were promised and that and the contract they should get, which goes over like 30 million euros. They're in court for that, as well as for something else. So all in all, that's not going to change. Does Neymar want to go back? Absolutely. The latest story is just an old story in a way that uh, he's called Barcelona. Who is Barcelona? Uh, I mean, does he really need to call Mr. Barcelona? It's very clear that Barcelona knows that he wants to come back. But it's very clear that Barcelona, first of all, don't have the inclination to bring him back. And secondly, even though they may rumor, they may allow the rumor to continue because that will make him expensive if, say, he goes to Real Madrid. But secondly, they just don't have the finances for it. So that should be the end of the story, but it won't be. What's interesting, though, and I want to ask uh, Gab uh, this, is that PSG, it sounds like they've been forced to either get a lot of players out of the wage bill or maybe one of the superstars. Do you think that's what's going to happen in the summer? I think it's a difficult one for, uh, for Paris Saint-Germain. Obviously, they have serious financial fair play issues. And that's part of the reason why, if you, you know, look back at what happened uh, over the summer, uh, you know, they, they really reduced their squad. They might, they might have hung on to more superstars. But obviously, uh, a lot of these other guys who were maybe providing depth um, uh, were, were, were let go or, or, were, or were loaned out. Uh, obviously, we've got the Rabio situation uh, as well. It doesn't look like he's going to, uh, to resign at all. In fact, it looks like he's heading to Barcelona of all places. Um, it's a difficult one. And I think also from the perspective of Paris Saint-Germain, and Thomas Tuchel talked about this, they are extremely, extremely light in central midfield. This is something that was flagged up before. But, you know, with Thiago Mota leaving, um, you know, he's had to play Marquinhos in midfield, who's really, uh, for me, a phenomenal player, but is a defender. He's had to play uh, Julian Draxler in midfield. Again, for me, a, a good player, but really an attacking midfielder. Other than Marco Verratti, he doesn't have a guy who can play uh, in the middle of the park and, and, and has some level of experience. So... I think you put those two things together, he might well appreciate having um, a, a more balanced squad and, you know, letting Neymar or maybe Cavani, if you can get a big fee for them, go. That might be a way that you can then bring in some experience in midfield. Allen from Napoli is a guy who's been mentioned. Supposedly, he's, uh, he's Neymar's mate. Um, if you could do that, then maybe you can do that while still respecting uh, the, the financial fair play regulations. 
One other option that has come up in um, the news is uh, Philippe Coutinho could play a makeshift as a swap deal um, with, uh, with PSG for Neymar. And uh, I was wondering whether you thought that was possible. He's just had nine starts in the La Liga this season. Valverde obviously says he doesn't really want to let him go or anything. It's just down the pecking order for now. Uh, what do you think about that? Do you think that's a possibility? Or is he headed Man United's way? Or is he going to stay at Barcelona? Can I just describe all this in one word? All those rumours? Rubbish. Absolutely rubbish. There's absolutely nothing in it. And it's the typical story that we discussed last week as well that gets out there because it fills pages. Uh, it allows people perhaps a bet or two. But it's got based on nothing. Yes, certainly he's had to fight for his place and he's not happy about the fact that uh, he's not a regular Barcelona. But who is it to blame? Himself. His performances are not at the level that we've seen in the past. His uh, chance creation is the lowest that he has been in eight years. Dembele is well ahead him. And you know who said that? Valverde's assistant just at the weekend. So Valverde has said he's got to fight for his place. If he's unhappy, well, show him in training that you deserve to play. Continue to Manchester United. Continue to return into the Premier League. Continue to PSG. is absolutely rubbish. Gab, any, anything to add to that? Or do you also think that that's complete rubbish? No, I, 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 I'm with Guillaume on this one. I'd be very surprised simply because I think the, the priority for Paris Saint-Germain right now, you know, from their perspective, is, is as I said, it's, it's, it's a midfielder. It's a central midfielder, defensive midfielder, Coutinho. Of course, much more of, of an attacking midfielder. They certainly don't lack for playmakers um, at uh, Paris Saint-Germain. And, you know, people mention swaps. It's it's always, we're guilty of this in Italy. I, I know the Spanish media often do it, uh, especially when it comes to uh, the players of Real Madrid or Barcelona. When there's a superstar who's not wanted, then always there's a story. Oh, yeah, look, you know, this foreign club that has a player that Real Madrid want, they're willing to take so-and-so in, in part exchange, you know, and that's how, how you get sort of these, uh, some of these, you know, crazy, wacky stories where it's, you know, oh, look, it's, it's bail for, for Pogba and Lukaku. Uh, no, it's not, you know. So uh, I, I think I'm buying what Guillaume said. You know, Coutinho made a choice to go to Barcelona. I think he is going to, to fight for his place on the side. I think there's also going to come a time when, frankly, uh, as good as Dembele's production has been and, even though he's found the, the balance in, in, in midfield uh, at times with Artur and Rakitic, I think there's going to be a time when they actually need uh, Philippe Coutinho in the starting eleven, and that's why he's there. Actually, Gap makes a very good point that if PSG are looking for a midfielder, they wouldn't be looking for Coutinho anyway. And that is the problem that he's had at Barcelona. He is not a midfielder. I said it from day one. He's, he's, a, he's a forward uh, happier to play on the left-hand side, for instance, that on the right when he plays uh, for Brazil, he does so as, as uh, Neymar used the left-hand side of the attack, but further forward than he was played sometimes. The technical secretary, former one of Barcelona, Robert Fernández, used to say, ah, he's the new Iniesta. He never is. He never will be. That's not what his nature tells him, or at least how he feels that he's playing his best football. He's confused now. He hasn't got a position in the lineup, and he doesn't know how to help the team. So when doubts get into your mind, that's like venom. I heard what you said about swap deals, but there's one more swap deal that we just have to discuss because it's uh, come up again. It's Malcolm and Willian's uh, swap. Uh, now, Willian's 30 years old. Uh, he's had, what, uh, zero assists uh, or one assist and zero goals in his last 10 Premier League games. Um, uh, on the other hand, Malcolm's is 21 years old and has great potential. This could be possibly really good for Chelsea. Is that likely to happen or is that another thing that's just one of those things that's made up because swap deals don't happen? Barcelona uh, have got no interest in William now because in the past, yes, they tried to get him when they were desperate to get quality players. There's no intention of doing a swap deal. Uh, they haven't even considered it as well. Malcolm right now is not in the market. There was even a Chinese team willing to pay about £25 million for him. Barcelona said no to that. So... No swap deal. They haven't got to Chelsea to talk about William and something else that has come up, and we'll talk about him later. Morata to Barcelona, nothing on that either. Barcelona are not after Morata. Uh, in fact, if you want, we'll continue with Morata a little bit uh, as uh, he's been linked with Sevilla and Atletico Madrid. His agent went first to Sevilla and then to Atletico Madrid, reached an agreement on personal terms with both of them, and then Sevilla realized, having spoken to Chelsea, that it wasn't as cheap as uh, they were mentioned. 
Atletico Madrid don't have the money as they are on the on the limit of financial fair play to actually get him either. So despite the fact that uh, yes, they agreed terms personally, that's not going to go any further. Right, uh, Gab. I'm going to ask you about one other Chelsea target. Uh, that seems to be Gonzalo uh, Gonzalo Higuain. Um, it's a complicated thing. I could try and explain it, but I'm sure you do a better job of it. But I believe he's a Juve player who's on loan uh, with AC Milan, and AC Milan uh, are seemingly are ready to let go of him, but they want a replacement before that happens. What, what's going on there? Please, please fill me in. This is something we've talked about a lot, obviously, on ESPN. It's, it's something that's probably really dominating. Um, and I think we need a little bit of, of clarity here. Um, Gonzalo Higuain has a brother uh, whose name, I think, is Diego, maybe. I, I don't know. Whatever this guy's name. It's not the brother who plays professionally. Uh, it's this other dude who sort of is half Asian, half spokes, but he's back in Buenos Aires now. And he is the guy who's driving all this, right? He is the guy who is talking continuously about how Chelsea are going to take uh, his brother and, and they want him and, and, and all this other stuff. And he's been speaking in Spain. He's been speaking in Italy. I think there's a basic maths problem here. Or sorry, that's one reason to believe he's going to go. And the other reason to believe he's going to go is, of course, that uh, a couple of years ago with Maurizio Sarri in, in Naples, he scored 36 goals and uh, Sarri needs a center forward and Higuain knows the system and he's very productive in it. I think there's a number of issues here. The first one is, I think, from from Chelsea's perspective, Chelsea haven't qualified for the Champions League in two of the past three seasons. And they've had to make enormous payouts to Antonio Conte and uh, and Jose Mourinho. On top of that, Chelsea have three players or four players who are very important to them, uh, three in the present, one in the future, who go out of contract in 2020 and who they have to either extend or sell in the summer. Now, of course, that's Eden Hazard, that's Willian, that's Pedro, and that's Callum Hudson-Odoi. Um, another factor, Chelsea have just went and spent 64 million euros on Christian uh, Pulisic, who, of course, is is an expense that, that they have. So Chelsea aren't exactly rolling in money. It's very important for them to finish top four this season. But equally, you know, they have budgets. Financial fair play applies to Chelsea just like it does to, to every other club. They do not have a 70,000-seat stadium like, like some clubs. They, so Chelsea have been very reluctant to go and give multi-year extensions to players who are north of the age of 30. I want to come out and say this because there's been a lot of confusion about wages. Um, Those wages that you see for Gonzalo Higuain are net wages. Those numbers that whether it's 8.5 million or 9.5 million euros, either way, if Higuain were in the Premier League, he would be one of the top five paid players um, in the Premier League. And that's on his current wages. And if he moves... Skiam knows very well when players move, they like to get a bump in wages. On top of that, he turned 31 years old uh, December 10th. He has two and a half years remaining on his deal. Chelsea are going to be very reluctant to take on a a multi-year deal for a guy who's not going to have any resale value, for a guy who is on an enormous wage. I mean, they would rather go and give... Uh, and give the money to to Eden Hazard, frankly, to try to get him to stay, right? Uh, right now, Iguain makes about three million pounds a year uh, more than Eden Hazard. So obviously, that, I think, is going to be a problem, is going to be an issue. Um, the other massive complication all this is you touched upon it. Gonzalo Iguain is a Juventus player who is on loan to Milan until the end of the season. Milan are paying... Uh, for very complicated reasons, Milan are paying an enormous loan fee. It's a loan fee of 18 million euros this year, and they can buy, they can make the deal permanent by paying a further 36 million uh, in the summer. Now, where he to move, and this is very important from Juve's perspective that they get this money because it's part of what allows them to keep Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, so, were he to move, at a minimum, if it was a permanent uh, deal, at a minimum, Chelsea would need to pay. The 36 million euros um, that that is his uh, a buyback option in the summer, plus 9 million euros to make up the shortfall from the Milan end, which is already 45 million euros or around about 40, um, 40 million pounds, plus his wages for two and a half years. And again, those wages are almost in the Ozil Alexis, chances, uh, Alexis Sanchez range. Not quite, but they're right up there, top five paid player in the Premier League. I, to me, none of this makes sense. And on top of all this, because of the way the deal with Milan is structured, 
may not have final say on whether to let him go or not because until June 30th, he is a Milan player. So that means Milan are only going to let him go if they have a replacement, uh, which they don't have right now. And it's really important for Milan to finish in the top four as well in the Champions League for financial fair play reasons. So for all of this, I'm sure Sadi would love him. But unless Chelsea can get him on very, very attractive terms to them, and for me, I think that would need to be a short-term loan, um, I really don't see this happening no matter how much people go and talk about this. Uh, it just wouldn't make sense. It would, put, let me put it this way. It would be a big departure from the way Chelsea have done business in recent years, most recently just a year ago when um, they couldn't do the deal for Ed and Dzeko, uh, precisely because he was in his 30s and he wanted more years. Now, let me add uh, to that one thing. Uh, Gab told me that uh, Morata, brilliant information, by the way. I could listen to you all day. Uh, Gab told me that Morata could leave Chelsea if they found a replacement but they would like a loan deal, uh, I'm adding, with the possibility of an uh, obligation to buy perhaps in the summer, as they obviously both realise, Morat and Chelsea, that they're not made for each other. Uh, that replacement uh, has been suggested it could be Callum Wilson of uh, Bournemouth, uh, but I hear from Bournemouth that they've got no intention of selling at all, unless a crazy offer comes. Crazy offer means not the 50 million that people are talking about, closer to 100 million, which of course is not going to happen. So... Uh, it does look, yeah, I hear the laughs though, at the back there. Uh, so Chelsea continues the search for a replacement. And right now, with the financial conditions that are put on the table, Morata is not to go uh, to Atletico Madrid or Sevilla. Sevilla have completely abandoned that possibility anyway. It's an interesting one because partly of because of the way Chelsea uh, are set up and the players they have on loan, uh, they could also go to Sarri and say, OK, look, no replacement. Make it work with Morata. Do the best you can. You've got Giroud. You can have Michi Bachuai, who, of course, is back from uh, uh, back from Valencia, as an option. Um, you can, if you really want, we can try to bring Tammy Abraham back. Tammy Abraham, who I think has scored, is it 12 or 16 goals or something like that, uh, in the championship. I know Sadi talks about the importance of, he said again, you know, he needs two players. He wants another midfielder for depth uh, if Fabregas goes or, or – with Fabregas going, I should say. Um, and uh, and he wants, obviously, another centre forward. Uh, but again, it's just Chelsea. I, I think they pay attention to their numbers. I think they pay they pay attention to the bottom line. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they say, sorry, Maurizio, it's not going to work. There's nobody we can bring him now. We're not going to spend $100 million, even $50 million on Callum Wilson with, with his two cruciate uh, knee injuries that he's had, as, as, as talented as he is. Um, so make it work with with what you have. And and maybe, like I said, another body, whether it's Bacuay, who, by the way, had a tremendous second half of the season last year at Borussia Dortmund, right? Simply because it didn't work at Valencia and simply because Conte didn't like him, you know, doesn't mean he's a terrible player. Um, Tammy Abraham, 21 years old, trying to go in the championship, big body, works hard. Why not? But Troye looks a terrible player right now. Lack of confidence and everything else. I don't know how you can recover that quickly to make an impact at Chelsea, but of course uh, he may force to uh, use that. But as you mentioned, Sesk, just one thing now that he's gone. 24 hours before he left... Uh, you look like it could go down to the end of the month because from Chelsea, they wanted a replacement, of course, as they announced publicly. And despite the fact that Sarri had said to Sesk, I'm not going to play you again. You're not in the mental condition to play because you obviously have got your head in, in Monaco. Despite the fact that his representatives were already in Monaco, that Thierry Henry was waiting for him, that he had the luggage ready. Uh, Chelsea were like, no, 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 uh, not yet, not yet. But finally, uh, I think Sesk uh, just basically uh, asked the club to let him go because there was nothing he could add to Chelsea anymore. So eventually Chelsea opened the door and that's why it was all confirmed yesterday. Well, um, one final thing that we do need to look at is another club that can only uh, do loans. Uh, that's what uh, Unai Emery said uh, recently in a press conference where he said that Arsenal are only going to get in loan players in the winter transfer season. Uh, do you reckon uh, Denis Suarez is still on because Barcelona obviously wanted to get cash for him? Uh, what, what are the options for them? Let me say something about what Unai say, and I, I know uh, Gaff has got strong views on that, so we can discuss it a little bit. Because I wonder, um, and Gav wonders himself, why he said that. 
Let me tell you why he said it, and then Gab, I would like to know what you think of it, because he said it. He said that only loans is what uh, he's going to do at Arsenal now, as there is no money for anything else. In brackets, there will be money in the summer. No doubt about that. Uh, not huge amounts, but there will be money to sign players. Not now. And he said it because uh, two things. One, he thought everybody knew. He thought it was box properly. So he's not coming out with any new stories. He was just being honest. Honesty is not a coin that uh, we used to uh, uh, pay things with. That saying didn't work in English, but you know what I'm saying. It's not usual that the manager comes out with the truth. So he came out with the truth. But also he, he tried to quash that way uh, stories that have come in the Spanish press, especially in the Sevilla press, that he wanted uh, Ever Banega. He wanted to uh, let everybody know that he was not after Ever Banega, a seven, eight, nine million euros as it was being mentioned. He did not want to disturb Sevilla because he, anyway, doesn't have the money and he was thinking, he wasn't thinking of him. But that gap came out a little bit strange and people understood that perhaps he was having a go at the owner, which is not the case, but it did sound like it. Yeah, I, I was surprised. And in fact, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a, uh, on a story for, for ESPN. We're, we're going to try to piece together uh, what happened. Um, it, I think with Unai Emery, I think he's, a, he's obviously he's, he's a brilliant coach. I think he has some communication issues. We saw this earlier this year uh, with um, with Mesut Ozil as well. Remember when when he was dropped and he's like, "Oh, I think he has a back injury. Where is he? I don't know." You know, and it's kind of like, "All right, dude, oh, it's, it's too physical for him against Bournemouth. Bournemouth of all teams, too physical." I I don't know if he has some communication issues. The way he said it, the way it was reported. You know, it brings back the whole narrative that we've had for 10 years with Stan Kroenke when Wenger was there where they weren't spending money and is it Kroenke who's not spending money and so on. That's the last thing you want to do, right, is go out and say, oh, no, you know, you're give the impression that he's having to go at the club like, oh, no, we have no money. There's no money in the piggy bank anymore. No, it's because of all the money they gave to Mesut Ozil. You know, that puts Raul Sanyehi in, in a difficult position. Uh, of course, he's running the football side of the club as well. Um, so... I'm assuming right now, and I haven't done the reporting yet, we've heard from Guillaume there, that uh, this is not the case, that all he's saying is we don't plan on spending any money in, in January, but we are working on a couple of loans, and then in the summer we'll see. I mean, if, if Neymar became available for $50 million, I'm sure Arsenal could find the money. You only need to look at, at the last couple of years of, uh, of Arsenal's books and accounts to see that they have spent more money, and... And as a club, they've been profitable. This is not a club that has that has financial fair play concerns. Um, so, I, I the only thing I would, I would say about Emery here is, I think he has some communications issues, and it's it's not just his English or his voice or, or whatever. I, I think sometimes, you know, he doesn't perhaps he could be briefed a little bit better on on the backstory to the club and how certain things. Are going to be uh, are, are going to be taken if he simply says we haven't budgeted for permanent deals in January for many different reasons. It's fine um, if he comes out and says we don't have money to make signings in January. No, we can only afford loans. Then that's going to be taken differently. As um, as I said earlier, he, he, he is actually far too honest and perhaps even naive. He of course gets briefed beforehand, and in this case. Um, more than communication issues is the fact that he's got to deal with how he sends the message, understanding the question, come out in the right way. So eventually, yes, you can call it communication issues. Uh, but for, for here, yeah, why don't you just yeah. do what, what, what Sally does, right? Which is, I'm not in charge of signings. Go, go talk to, go talk to Raúl. Go talk to Ms. Lantat, Go talk to whoever is responsible for it, and just just pass it off. You know. The thing is, though. He's got a part, a part responsibility on what comes in. So he doesn't want to avoid that. And of course, if you avoid that, Sarri is happy to coach, if you like. But if you avoid that part of the role, which is not the biggest, but it is part of it, perhaps you feel your authority diminishes. So uh, it is a fine balance that you've got to come out with there. But to update you on, uh, on Denis Suarez and also on Ramsey, uh, Denis Suarez, Barcelona thought the deal was going to be taking place this week because they thought it was going to be an easy one. Denis Suarez says, Arsenal or nothing, or I stay. 
but uh, it's not as easy as that. There are other teams that are interested. Denis Suarez is saying exactly the same. The problem is for Arsenal, Denis Suarez is not a top priority. And because they've got a limited amount of money they can use on wages as well and on loan deals, they're just waiting to take a final decision. On Ramsey, uh, he will probably finalise his future, which he hasn't done yet, in terms of uh, telling everybody that he's talking to, next week, probably next week. Now, uh, quite clearly, he Sevilla is one of the teams that his representative spoke to in Spain, one of the two that I mentioned that um, they've had spoken to in Spain. But even though he hasn't announced that Juventus is the, is, the, is, the, is the club and everybody seems to agree that that is the case, what I can tell you is it looks very closely that it will be. Because Inter Milan went for a second time, having spoken to him about a month ago, went for a second time in the last few days to say, actually, is there a possibility? Because I hear that it's not all closed. And they said to Inter, it's not all closed, but it's almost like it is. So it looks like he will be a Juventus player and at some point he will announce it. Why is he not at Arsenal? And a lot of people are wondering that if there is so many clubs that want him. Um, two reasons, I think. One, what the money that he's demanding is huge, which will put him in the, in, in the uh, start again. The money that uh, he's demanding is huge. And given the possibility of using the money that they had available at the time on Ozil, and giving him a new contract and making him happy, or giving it to Ramsey, and he couldn't, they couldn't give it to both, they went for Ozil. The second reason is, I think when I ask sometimes, what's Ramsey's best position? How, how can we use him in the way that I want the team to play? And that is uh, something as well why he hasn't killed anybody at Arsenal to keep him, because he's not sure what's his role in the kind of football that he wants to put in practice at Arsenal. Thank you. That's been, that's been an absolutely fantastic conversation with both of you. Thank you, Gab, for joining us. Thank you, Guillaume, for letting me uh, host this bit. And, uh, of course, we'll be back on, uh, again, on, I think, Tuesday or Wednesday, and then again back on Friday or Saturday, depending on how we schedule all of that. So this has been uh, the second episode of uh, GB Transfer Show, uh, in association with Football Index, of course.